Hello and welcome to the Long Island Weather Report for this week. It is September 22nd, 2024. I do apologize if we've got a lot of fans going. Because while you're getting to enjoy a nice cool night, I've got to have my air conditioner on and trying to cool this place down because it's still an oven in here. So um, anyway, yeah, it's a furnace in here. It's a furnace heights. Uh, but anyway, we had a pretty decent weekend. Uh, mix of clouds and sun. Of course, it was great to hear the Mets won. They beat the Phillies again tonight. I'm telling you, the Mets are amazing. They're doing great. I don't talk about sports much, but I'm a Mets fan, so I'm very happy to see them doing so well. Uh, anyway, um, let's get back to the weather. Uh, so today was a, depending on where you were, you had more clouds and sun. There were some toward the afternoon, particularly later in the afternoon. Um, we had some sunshine around. This was Belmont Lake here, uh, which I did wind up going to instead of just going directly to Babylon. I, I went to Belmont Lake instead where you're getting to see a little bit of fall color here just starting. Uh, the, the, the leaves are going to be changing a little early this year, um, I think. Uh, and uh, you can see here, we, we did have a lot of these clouds around. And then toward later, uh, it got overcast again. So depending, we're kind of back and forth in the clouds. Of course, the alley, it's still like 67 in the alley there, 66, 67. I tried to open the window last night, and it smelled. It was just warm, stale air. and Cigarette smoke and perfume is disgusting. I had to close the window and put the air conditioner right back on again. But most of you are enjoying temperatures in the low 60s, like Islip, 62 with a dew point of 49. Wow, so the dew points are really dropping. 63, dew point of 52. Boy, I wish I could enjoy that nice, fresh air. Even in Tom's River at Miller Air Park, it's down to 57. So, um, yeah, very nice out there. Nice, cool air. Most Almost all of you, even those of you in New York City, can have the air conditioner off, except for people who live in hell holes that don't have windows that face the outside. So, um, unless I drill a hole in the roof. So, um, and if I, if I would, I could. I don't know. If I could, I would. But anyway, let's go to highs. Temperatures today, only in the low 70s for the most part. Nice and cool, low 70s. Definitely felt more fall-like for the first day of fall. Yesterday was the last day of summer, and hopefully you saw my video from Long Beach. I'm not going to show you the pictures, but it was very beautiful. Uh, and uh, lows, upper 50s to around 60, mid 50s in Jersey. I have a feeling it's going to be cooler than that tonight uh, for sure. Um, so really, really nice. Uh, going looking at the climate statistics today, Islip hit a high of 73 and a low of 60. Uh, so we were actually right at normal for the high. The low is 3 degrees above normal, so that still put us 2 degrees above normal for the day. And again, only 0 0.06 inches of rain at Islip, an extremely dry month. Only one day with precipitation for the whole month, and here we are. Uh, one of the driest Septembers ever on record, I think, um, for our area. Um, we can look at New York City as well. Central Park, high of 74, low of 61, just a degree above normal. And they've had a little more. 0.24 inch of rain, but that's all there is. So let's go look at the satellite now, and you can see um, we had we've had spotty issues with the satellite data today. We'll see if we can kind of put a loop together. The site's been in and out, um, kind of run this through the afternoon when things kind of broke up a little bit for a little bit. So you can see um, it's kind of broke up, and then we had more clouds come in a little bit later, uh, and then you can see some more clouds here, and then they got these higher level clouds here with a low pressure system uh, that is off to our west. Um, you'll see that here. Um, you see here that is with this cold front and low pressure system that is going to be taking its time because we still have that ridge over us. So if we look at the weather map, you'll see still got the high pressure over the northeast. Uh, we've got a slow moving frontal boundary going through the middle of the country. Uh, and you'll see that there are some rain chances with that. Uh, and uh, we're going to be looking and taking a look at some of those rain chances that we may have here. Uh, and there's also some heavy rain possible in some of these other areas in the Midwest. Uh, we'll track this through, and you'll see this front is really going to be moving very slow. So no rain tomorrow, and even Tuesday, probably no rain in our area, maybe a little bit off to the west. It's Wednesday into Thursday that we have enough um, uh, that we'll get a little bit more. As far as excessive rain, who gets excessive rain? Let's click on that. Um, and um, I don't think our area will be in on any of that. Nope. So no heavy rain for us. Um, we can look at the QPF here. 
and goes through day through one through seven. And let's see what they have. You can see they don't. Ha they're not giving us much rain. Much of the rain is now staying off to the west. So originally we thought we'd have a decent amount. Shot at some wet weather this week, but now it's starting to be scaled back a little bit. Uh, National Hurricane Center. We have two areas that they're wa watching. There's one off Cape Verde. This is the one that we are going to watch here. Uh, this uh, disturbance, the 15% of cyclone chance of cyclone formation in 48 hours, and that will become the next storm. So uh, that will become next storm. It has not formed yet, but you'll see it definitely when we start looking at the models. Um, so let's go to the models, and we'll go to North American view. And we will go and look at that jet stream first on the GFS. And you can see definitely a bit of a mess uh, across the area. You can see, the, again, another messy jet stream. Here's your tropical system right here. Um, this is the 18Z GFS we are looking at. Um, and you'll see here that we have, again, a weird, a very weird jet stream. That's going to continue into October here. A very weird jet stream. And even if I go to the 12Z run, you'll see this is going to be a weird jet stream. I mean, it's way up in Canada. There's no big trough. So as far as any really cool weather goes, probably not uh, with that kind of setup. Um, we can also look at the European model as well. I'll go to the 12Z European. We'll compare. There are some differences, um, but generally, see, there are some differences. European wants to draw, have some more troughiness in the east to start October, uh, but I don't know if I believe that at all. Uh, let's, for, 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 constant, well, for um, continuity's sake, we're just going to use the H, uh, the, uh, the, 18, uh, the, the 12Z GFS. Uh, let's go look at the upper air. Look at that huge ridge in Canada. I mean, that's just crazy. So here's your tropical system. That's going to develop in the Gulf and could make an impact somewhere along the... Looks like the eastern Gulf right now. Um, as you see, got the ridge in Canada. See, there's a system that'll bring us a little trough to come through. bring us, uh, And then that ridge just builds back in for the weekend. Again, the same kind of deal again with that ridge uh, in eastern Canada. No change at all. At all. And um, well, actually, I should go to the Kona's view here on the satellite. That would help. Just to kind of show you what we have. Uh, so here's your tropical system down here that's developing. Here's your cold front. Uh, here's, again, here's, and this is the next, this is the next nice, cool, dry air mass come in. Let's see, do we have any wildfires going on? That's the other thing that I haven't been, I'm getting tired of talking about it, but we have to talk about it. Let's go to the Pacific Southwest view here, because I thought not that, not that one, not that one. Um, Southern Rockies. Looked like there was a wildfire over there. Let's see what we got. Um, it looks like there's one in Arizona. Yeah, there is one in Arizona right now. I don't see anything too much along the West Coast. Wait a minute, there is. All right, hold on. Let's go to the U.S. Pacific Coast one. Let's see. We have, yeah, a little bit. It doesn't look like it's too crazy. Um, see a little bit over there, and then Canada. I don't think we're going to be seeing any more wild, uh, big wildfires. I hope. I, I don't want to deal with any more wildfire smoke. I really don't. Let's see. I don't see too much any wildfires going on in Canada. I mean, starting the temperatures are starting to drop, and there's been some precipitation up there. So hopefully, I'm more concerned about our area when it comes to that because we haven't had any rain. Um, so anyway, let's. Go back to the models and go and switch to the European model, 12Z European. Just I want to keep use the same time, 12Z, all right? So European a little different. Just a sleep. There's some differences on the European, generally with that trough that it wants to bring in as we get more into October. Uh, but in the case, this is going to result in the above normal temperatures Obviously, so obviously European doesn't give us temperature anomalies, but we'll go to the GFS and we'll look at that. And you'll see here, we got the uh, temperatures. T the temperatures were a little more near normal today, but generally you see the above normal temperatures well into Canada. 
Tuesday cools down a little bit, mainly because of precipitation. Same thing for Wednesday. Um, but you can see no, uh, much of the country above normal, even in the eastern Canada. There's a little bit of a cool shot there that comes in a little bit, but not that much. And just staying, you can see that ridge right there in eastern Canada not really going anywhere. Uh, not going anywhere. So just to give me a minute. i got to turn off a fan. second there just, <laughs> just trying to get the fans to just circulate the air around in this furnace <sighs> so anyway getting back to the weather let's go and now look at the surface i will go to the conus view and we will go look at the gfs there's your low pressure again offshore there it's it's moving south which is very strange again but it just shows you how strong this high is all right, so that high keeps the rain away tomorrow and most likely Tuesday. Uh, and then here we are until Wednesday. You start seeing some rain, mainly in the western areas. There's your tropical system. And then that high just builds right in. So maybe after some rain chances Thursday, that high builds right in. This is, oh, darn it, I'm looking at the 18Z run. All right, 12Z run, my mistake. All right, nothing's really. 12Z run maybe brings a little more rain in us on Wednesday. And then Thursday, maybe a little more. But here comes your tropical system. High kind of builds down, and then it kind of just gets stopped and then just forced back to this northwest. Very strange. And then there's another retrograding low that's over here. So very, very strange stuff going on on this model. Very strange. You can see we're continuing to see that setup with the highs coming out of eastern Canada. Um, let's see if the 18Z looks any different, and it really doesn't. Uh, but very, very strange to see all this. And there's your other tropical system there. That would be your other. So it de you'll definitely see some tropical systems being uh, shown here. Um, we'll go to the European model. 12Z run of the European. Euro keeps us driving on Wednesday. The Euro really just bare. The Euro is even drier than the, than the GFS. And it builds that high in. That's crazy. That is nuts. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. So if we go look at the total accumulated precip through the end of this week, I mean, barely anything on the euro. We'd be lucky to get a quarter of an inch. Now, the GFS is a little more generous, maybe giving us one to two and maybe locally more than that to the north. That's the 18Z run. This is the 12Z runs. The GFS generally showing more. I really hope we get some rain because... Uh, things are getting very dry, and I'm really worried that we're going to have some issues with wildfires. You're starting to see the leaves come off the trees. It's going to be a big problem, uh, and I, I really hope that we get some rain this week. Uh, but that ridging in eastern Canada is just so strong. So I'm going to shift this over to the eastern U.S. view. Now we're going to go back to this and look at some of the tropical systems because we do have to talk about them too as well, obviously. Uh, so you have this tropical system here that will be making, I think that's the H-Storm. Was it Helene? I forgot the name. Uh, but that that is, would, that is the first storm to look at, all right? And then there's another storm. You can see, look at what goes on here. So you get this low, this, this, it's just all messed up when you don't have a jet stream. Look at the lows. Just You're seeing the atmosphere doing really crazy things. Really, really crazy things. That's the 12Z run. At least it doesn't have that. Uh, other, it has another. It has the second tropical system in the Gulf, but the 18Z run has a tropical system here. And look at that. Who knows where that's going to go? Of course, that is a very powerful hurricane right there. If that were to develop, um, but we're going to we're going to talk first about the storm in the Gulf. So let's go look at the Gulf states here, and take a look at the storm here. We'll take one storm at a time, and I will again. We'll. We'll stick to the 18Z on this run, all right? You can see this is going to be a very powerful hurricane. Um, you can see that already. Uh, probably major hurricane, if anything. Um, um, if we go to the, uh, the winds, yeah, this would be at least a Category 3, if not more, and this would be deal a devastating blow to the panhandle of Florida. That is devastating. If that were to, if that were to verify, the European, they all pretty much agree. Europeans not quite as strong with it, 
European's a lot weaker. GFS. So we still have big differences here with how strong the storm is going to be. Hasn't even formed yet. So I'm not going to get too much into it at this point. But yeah, GFS definitely looks pretty scary. And once the storm forms, I will be producing updates for you on it. Uh, but the storm has not formed yet. So I'm going to get back to our weather here. I'm going to look at the HRRR and get a little more in the short range here. Uh, we'll start with the dew points and wind flows. Our zero is the HRRR. And you see that northeast flow continues tomorrow, northeast to east flow. Obviously, we've had some coastal issues with that. That continues tomorrow. The wind won't be as strong. There isn't as much of a pressure gradient. Uh, and then into, as into Tuesday, you continue to see the northeast flow. And still, dew points low. It'll be comfortable. That Those lower dew points generally are going to help to keep the area dry. Uh, tonight, temperatures will probably drop into the 50s in most locations, except, you know, in, uh, in my urban shit box. Uh, but anyway, sorry for the language, but it's what it is. Uh, and then uh, for your Monday, uh, high temperatures are going to struggle to reach 70. Uh, and then, again, another cool night tomorrow night, lows in the 50s. And then, um, again, similar temperatures on, on Tuesday. Very cool, very comfortable conditions. Uh, as far as precipitation goes, um, I think that, that most of that rain is going to stay away. So here we go. Here's what happens tomorrow. You can see it, it tries to bring some showers into the western areas, but it kind of fizzles them out. And honestly, maybe in New Jersey you'll see something. I'm really not too sure on that. Here we go for Tuesday, and again, it's showing some light stuff. But this may be very well overdone. Um, let's see what the NAM has uh, for this. Because given that dry air, I just don't see the rain making it here. That high almost looks like it tries to build down even more on Tuesday. So yeah, I think we're going to I don't think we're going to see much of any rain the next couple of days here. Um, I'll go over to the GFS next uh, and we'll show you what the GFS has. GFS has some light precipitation. I don't know if I'm even buying that at this point with such dry air. I really don't see it. Uh, this is your dew point and wind flow. You can see that dry air. But you can see there's a bit of a stall frontal boundary off to the southwest. That sort of sets up. Then Wednesday, we start seeing the humidity increase. And Wednesday to Thursday, that would be our better chance of seeing some rain. And then the dry air comes back again with more northeast winds again. Get used to those northeast winds. I'm telling you, we're getting plenty of them. It sucks I can't enjoy them where I live. Uh, but anyway, going for the temperatures here. You can see... Uh, Again, nothing really. Too, it warms up on Thursday. That would be the day that it warms up. And then that front comes through, and then the temperatures drop again. So see how the temperatures drop. and then, But nothing really abnormally cool. Still going to have 70s. Still pleasant temperatures. Nothing really too chilly at all. Um, as far as skies go, um, obviously plenty of clouds the next couple of days. High and mid-level, maybe some low-level clouds too. Same thing for Wednesday. This is the 12Z GFS run. Here we are on Friday, and you can see it's got mostly sunny skies over us, and then that, there's like a low that pushes through, and then that pushes that even south. So it keeps mostly sunny, maybe more to the southwest. You might have some clouds, but again, looks like the weekend. Plenty of sunshine for the end of the month uh, after we get through this week. Uh, and this is the GFS. So this is the 12Z GFS I'm using here. I could shift it off to the 18Z if we see any differences here. Um, not really. They look pretty much the same to me. So uh, let's go to the RGEM, which is our other sky model, which we use. I think we only have the 12Z for that. But here you go, the RGEM, obviously, more in the way of high clouds. But there'll still be some filtered sunshine. Tuesday, again, there could be pat clouds and maybe some patchy clearing, perhaps. Wednesday, we're going to see more in the way of clouds and some shower chances, hopefully, by then. Hopefully, we'll see something. Um... Yeah, the R gem. Let's do the R gem here, kind of showing the rain here. R gem again, mainly off to the west. What about the Nam Twelve? I mean, it's just—is it ever going to rain? I mean, this is just. Maybe we get something. Yeah, the R, the Nam is giving us some rain overnight. I really hope this verifies because this is really the only shot of rain we've got. Uh, and things, like I said, are very dry. The leaves, the changing early. Uh, this is the driest September. This may be the driest September on record. I don't know what the record is, but uh, we're definitely, definitely, definitely uh, very unusual to say for sure. Um, so let's 
go and talk about what the CPC is saying. I guess we've been through all of this already. Uh, Klein Prediction Center. Six to ten day outlook. We're in below normal again with precipitation. They're above normal in the southeast because of the tropical systems. Much of the country below normal, above normal. And then the eight to 14 day, fairly similar. Uh, above normal throughout all the entire country. And uh, again, uh, below normal t- precipitation, much of the country, above normal in the southeast. We're in a near normal setup for the eight to 14 day. Uh, yeah, this is pretty unusual. Uh, I've got to say, it, very, very unusual. And you can see there really isn't any chilly air anywhere. Um, again, you see those the surf advisories. But even if we go up into Canada, I mean, it's not that cold. 70s, let's see, we have to go way up there. we got 70s, 50s. Let's see, maybe the we- western Canada, I think, has some more of the cooler air. Let's see what we got over here. They got some 60s and 50s for high, but nothing really. I mean, for mid-September, you'd think it would be colder than that. Definitely very, very, very unusual and kind of disturbing, but not surprising, given all that we know about what's happening with our planet and our climate. Uh, So um, I will stop off lastly at the Arctic ice that we always checked out as well. Sea ice today. and see what we've got here on the sea ice today. Uh, Minimum, seasonal minimum, uh, while well, a new record is unlikely. It's kind of the same uh, report we had last time. Um, we're not going to go to a blue ocean event, but definitely below definitely below the normal uh, for sea ice. But not at the re- we're not in record territory, but we're definitely this is where we're supposed to be, and we're probably never going to see that again. So uh, given unless we had a couple of big Pinatubo-style eruptions uh, that could possibly reverse the effects, but we need that to happen. Um and, well, we'll have to see if Mother Nature can intervene. And, because it doesn't seem like uh, people seem to realize what the hell's going on. Uh, too in love with their pickup trucks to realize what's going on. So, anyway, I think that's going to wrap up things. And, again, uh, we're watching this uh, developing right here in this area right here. They don't have anything out for it. But this is going to become the next storm here in the tropics. Uh, and it could be a big one. So, uh but until then, uh, until uh, this gets a name and gets a little closer, we'll talk about it. But uh, probably update you on the weather probably as we get toward closer toward Wednesday when this thing forms. Uh, but other than that, uh, again, just think it's going to be mainly dry, just some clouds. Uh, and uh, I really hope we get some rain. Uh, I don't want to come back here again and say we're not going to get any rain. But anyway, middle of the week, I'll have another video on the weather. Have a good day. Or should I say, have a good night. <laughs>